Well, as you can see, the coast of Rhode Island, especially here at East Matunic Beach, is, is getting swallowed by the ocean. The waves and this, this recent blizzard in 2010 have, have gone right around a, a large riprap wall and eroded the bluff almost to the road behind us. Um, in, that, in the ground there, there are water pipes, sewer pipes, electric, all sorts of infrastructure that serve this year-round community. Over to our east, we've got the Ocean Mist, a well-known night spot and landmark. Uh, the owner just told us that 25 years ago, when he first got the place, patrons could hand a drink from the beach to the deck. And as you can see, that's not happening right now. The beach is gone. It's been completely scoured out. And uh, the waves have really taken what was the beach uh, from in front of all these homes and businesses in this community and, and uh, pose a major threat. This problem is not just limited to South County. At this beach in Warwick, these stairs that used to lead to a waterfront home and what we presume was a long sandy beach now lead nowhere except Narragansett Bay. So, what options are available for resource managers and people living along the coast? These coastal communities need to plan now for sea level rise, hurricanes, and these ever more common northeaster storms, both to protect property and people. We all face tough choices about what infrastructure and property should be protected and how to pay for it. Hardening the shoreline with new sea walls and other structures is not a real option for much of the coast, as these may just make the problem worse for adjacent shores. Sediment management, beach and dune restoration, and the use of living shorelines are some of the softer alternatives. Raising roads, bridges, and structures may also be possible. In some cases, just letting nature take its course may be the best or only option. Save the Bay is working to educate the public and to create the political will to make those difficult decisions in the face of these challenges.